what we have is a problem of tribalism. And tribalism is an issue that we must continue to deal with and to fight with as we continue to develop our country. We cannot achieve our goals if we continue to embark on tribalistic politics. You know, Kenya and tribalism is like chanda na pete, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it has come to an extent that sometimes even securing a job in some government office, you have to come from a certain tribe, regardless of your qualifications. So if you don't come from a certain tribe, you are not considered. So there is nothing like meritocracy in acquiring of jobs. So those who don't even qualify get jobs because they come from a certain ethnic group. It's so sad. Kenya has at least 43 different ethnic groups. And uh, if I add uh, the Indian community, I think Kenya will have 44 different ethnic groups. So correct me if I am wrong, but uh, I think the Indian community in Kenya is also included as a, one of the tribes in Kenya, of course. So, Tanzania has uh, around 120. I'm saying around or about or an approximate of 120 ethnic groups because maybe there are some ethnic groups which have not yet been discovered. Maybe those little ones, you know what I mean? So, I want us to compare these two countries, Kenya and Tanzania. Tanzania, it's a large country, well-mannered, well-cultured, very humble, but it's so unfortunate that it's not as rich economically as it's supposed to be. Despite of Tanzania being so rich in natural resources, for instance, diamond, gold, and other natural minerals. So, I think Tanzania's economy is still low. It's, it's not where it's supposed to be, to be honest, with all the resources it has. But anyway, it's at the forefront when we come to matters of being united. I mean, Tanzanians, I think most of them are not divided by ethnic groups because they have one common language, Swahili, which unites them. I think this was enabled by Ujamaa, which was introduced in Tanzania by the late Mwalimu Julius Kambarage Nyerere. He did a lot to fight tribalism in Tanzania. Even though Ujamaa had its own shortcomings, but uh, at least something good came out of it. So Ujamaa is just like familyhood. So you see your neighbor as your family, your friend as your family, any other person who comes from a different tribe than yours is just like a family member to you. So I think that really helped to curb tribalism in Tanzania. And most of all, the Swahili language has become a uniting factor in Tanzania. But when we come to Kenya, I'm not saying that Tanzania is perfect, really. Tanzania has got its own problems and I can say there are many. It's not perfect. But anyway, since we are talking about uh, tribalism, let's focus on Kenya because Kenya has been suffering from this disease for a very long time. Kenya and tribalism. <laughs> 
Ah. <laughs> I wouldn't be talking about tribalism in Kenya if there was no tribalism in Kenya. It is tribalism that fuels post-election violence. Yes, yeah, see, as soon as there is elections in Kenya, what follows is violence. And who is fighting who? People from different ethnic groups. Is it worth it? That's the question I am asking today. Is it worth it to hate your neighbor just because he comes from a different ethnic group? Is it worth it to kill your neighbor just because he or she comes from a different ethnic group? Is it worth it to let tribalism divide you Kenyans? Is it worth it? Like, how are you benefiting from tribalism? How are you benefiting by being tribalistic? Mambo mengine yote Kenya ni excellent. Tatizo ni ukabira. Najua maneno haya yatawachoma kidogo, lakini razima ni wambie hapa hapa. Muumalize ukabira. Ukiisha ukabira. Kenya is the best country. Mzee John Pombe Magufuli said that the major problem in Kenya is tribalism. I also want to say that the two major problems in Kenya are tribalism and corruption. But what can Kenyans do if all this is being done by the people at the top? Top government officials are tribalistic, are corrupt. So how do you expect that there'll be change when the people at the top are the ones who are promoting all this? evils you tell me leave a comment down below let us discuss you elect leaders thinking that they are good no you don't elect leaders you elect politicians <laughs> thinking that they are good but in the real sense if you know what I'm talking about, they are so hypocritical. I'm nobody to judge, but I'm just saying who they are. Corrupt, tribalistic, hypocritical. You can name it. It's not only a Kenyan problem, it is an African problem. I'm just using Kenya as an example. I'm not saying that Kenya is bad. Kenya is a good country. I love Kenya. I love being in Kenya. I love being in Nairobi. I love, yeah, I love Kenya so much. I love Africa. I love this planet. And that's why I am advocating for change. If you're new to this channel, kindly consider subscribing, leave a comment, let us know what you think about this video. Give the video a thumbs up. Yeah, so, if we eradicate corruption and tribalism in Kenya, it will be the best country in the world. First, let us eradicate tribalism. Second, we eradicate corrupt leaders. No, not leaders, corrupt politicians. And replace them with good leaders. And then everything else I think will just flow smoothly. And third, let us eradicate dirty politics. 
and everything else will just flow. Let us embrace each other, let us unite, let us come together. There should be no any reason that we as Africans or as human beings, we are divided. And all I say, there is no need of having all these divisions all over the place. At you, I am this and this, I am that and that, so what? At the end of it all, you're just a human being, ordinary human being. So guys, this is going to be a very short one. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'll see you in my next one.